Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Darkjack, and in this video, I have some more boring grade gameplay in Black Ops 2. Well, sort of. In this video, I get a nuclear on the map raid using an LMG, and it's a decent gameplay. Uh, it's a long kill streak, but it's kind of slow. So I'm not going to talk about the gameplay itself. Instead, I'm going to talk about the subject for today, which is why I hate sequel baiting in games. Now, the phrase sequel baiting comes from Angry Joe, who is a YouTube video reviewer. He has some excellent content. And it's from him that I learned the phrase sequel baiting. And sequel baiting is the criticism he uses for some games where the game intentionally sets up the sequel for it. So you have to, you're forced to buy the sequel in order to play the full game. And sequel baiting exists for the purpose of making lots of money. And I made a video about this subject earlier that I'm going to talk more about now. And it's called Why Sequels Are So Profitable. And I talked in that video that the reason why sequels are so profitable is because you're forced to buy the sequel because it's like starting to read a really good book and then not finishing it or stopping halfway through. You have to buy the game or the movie in order to see the second half. And sequel baiting is a practice of where the game or the movie exists simply for the purpose of setting up the sequel. And this is almost always the case in trilogies. And the second game or the second movie in a trilogy almost always ends with a cliffhanger. So you're forced to buy the third and final one to see the end. Now let's see some ex actual examples of this in gaming. The first example that I can think of that's pretty prominent is Halo 2. And Halo 2 was the last Halo, Halo game of the Xbox. And in Halo 2, it ended with a cliffhanger. The Master Chief had returned to, er to Earth and he said, I'm here to finish the fight. And then the theme for Halo 3 or the catchphrase was, finish the fight. And so if you played Halo 2, you were essentially forced to buy an Xbox 360 in Halo 3 in order to, to finish the fight. And so overall, if you bought a brand new 360 with a big hard drive in Halo 3, that would cost you almost $500. And the same is also true of God of War 2. God of War 2 ended with a cliffhanger. Kratos returns to Mount Olympus, and he's fighting against the gods, and it ends in a cliffhanger. And then when God of War 3 comes out, it shows Kratos fighting on Mount Olympus. Which means in order to finish the God of War storyline, you would have to buy a $600 PS3 and then buy the $60 game. And what that means is that at the beginning of this generation of consoles, in order to finish the fight in Halo and to finish the story in God of War, it would cost you over $1,000 because you'd have to buy both consoles at launch or not necessarily at launch, but when the games came out in order to finish the fight and to finish the storyline. And another example of that is in Final Fantasy XIII 2. And in this game, I was totally not expecting the cliffhanger at the end. I thought XIII 2 would be the last of the thirteen series, just like ten two was the last of ten. Unless, of course, they come out with ten three later on after the HD remake, which would be kind of disappointing. And the cliffhanger totally caught me by surprise. Because at the end of 13.2, Sarah dies, which is pretty surprising, and then the goddess Etro comes, and it announces to be continued, and I was really disappointed with that, because I thought this would be the last game. I wish they had just ended it with 13. That would have been so much better, because I enjoyed playing 13 a lot more than 2 anyway. And so they'd better not do that with Final Fantasy 15. It had better be the last one. They'd better not make a sequel to it. And so with Final Fantasy 13 3, I'm going to w wait a long time after it comes out to buy it. I'll just buy it used because I'm mad at Square Enix for making a sequel and sequel baiting. And we see this in a lot of different games. Pretty much any time there's a trilogy, the second game in the trilogy is just a sequel baiter. We can see this in movies too. Like in The Matrix 2, that ended on a cliffhanger. And when I went to the theaters to watch The Matrix 2, after the cliffhanger at the end of the movie, showing that you'd have to go and watch the third one to see the real ending. Everyone in the theater was moaning. It was pretty funny because the people who made the movie totally got everyone. They got us in the bait and switch. And now we're all going to have to spend more money to see the ending. That's the purpose of sequels. And so with sequel baiting, the entire movie or game is just an advertisement for the sequel. And once they have you hooked, once they've got you hook, line, and sinker, you're going to have to spend the money to see the rest of it. And what that does is that makes me not want to buy the first game in a sequel, so that way I won't have to buy the other two. 
And it seems like a waste of money. Why can't they just make one game that's really good? And if they make a sequel, then make an, make an actual sequel that's good. Don't make it a simple cash-in for more money. But because you're taking advantage of people's desire to know the ending of a game or, or a book or a movie. And so what are some other examples of sequel betting that you could think of that I didn't bring up? And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys later.